Hello to all. Today we will be discussing about the small intestine and it is the most important part of the alimentary canal because it is meant for digestion as well as absorption. And there are a lot of confusion regarding the length of the small intestine. Actual length of the small intestine in the human beings is 6.25 meters. In human beings, the length of the alimentary canal is 6.25 meters, means it is approximately 20 to 21 feet long. And out of this, the duodenum part is 25 centimeter long, the jejunum part is 2.5 meter long, and the ileum part is 3.5 meter long. So it becomes 6.25 meters. And the greater length of the small intestine increases the scope for the food absorption because food is better absorbed in a long length intestine. And this 6.25 meter long small intestine is too much coiled. It is highly coiled basically. Okay. And it extends from the pylorus to the ileocecal wall. Pylorus is the last part of our stomach. We know very well cardiac, pyloric, okay, fundic, different parts we have studied. So it extends from the pylorus, means the pylorus part of the stomach opens into the first part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. And at the junction of at the junction of the ileum and the cecum, at the junction of the ileum and the cecum. Ileum is the last part of the small intestine and cecum is the first part of the large intestine. At that junction, a ileocecal valve is present. So I can say that our small intestine extends from the pylorus to the ileocecal valve. Now, there is a very important structure found in the small intestine of the human beings which increases the absorptive surface area of intestine and that is known as the plica circulates what i am speaking plica circulates it might be a new term for you people but it is very important for the competitive exams plica circularis which is also called as valves of kerkering which is also called as valves of kerkering now what are these and what is the location of these plica circularis or the folds see here numerous permanent circular folds they are many in number numerous permanent circular folds of mucous membrane found in the small intestine especially in the lower part of the duodenum and the jejunum and these folds are called as plica circularis or walls of kerkering fine and in lower part of the ileum they disappear means out of the three parts of the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum and the ileum, they are found in the lower part of the duodenum and the jejunum, but they completely disappear in the lower part of the ileum. And they are increasing the surface area for the absorption. As we know very well that the small intestine is meant for absorption as well as digestion. So there are certain modifications found in the small intestine which actually increase the absorptive surface area say for the plica circularis, the villi, the microvilli all these structures are meant for increasing the surface area of our small intestine. So again I am repeating there are numerous permanent circular folds of mucous membrane found in the small intestine especially in the lower part of the duodenum and the jejunum and these circular folds are called as plica circularis which are increasing the surface area for absorption. Now you might have heard about the very very important structure of the small intestine and that is known as the villi. Right from 10th class we know very well that villi, villi contains connective tissue, connective tissue containing connective tissue and blood capillaries. If you have seen a diagram in 11th class NCRT in the digestive system chapter you will see that the villi contains connective tissue as well as it contains the blood capillaries okay and villi are numerous highly vascular finger like projections villi are 
numerous they are many in number they are highly vascular they have a rich blood supply and they are finger like projections like this they are finger like projections okay which come out from the wall which come out from the wall into the lumen or the cavity of the intestine and villi increases the internal surface area for absorption villi increases the internal surface area for absorption up to how many times 10 times in the ileum in the ileum especially in the ileum so villi are highly vascular they are very much in number they are finger like projections okay and they increase the internal surface area of the small intestine okay and uh, especially in the ileum part and the cell lining the villi the cell which are lining the villi the cell lining the villi have brush border appearance and this brush border appearance of uh, them is just because of the microvilli so villi uh, villi consist of microvilli so cell lining the cell lining the villi have brush border appearance because of the microvilli and microvilli further increase the surface area for absorption so whether they are plica circularis or they are villi finger like projections or the brush border appearance uh, found on the villi known as the microvilli all are increasing the surface area for the absorption now one more thing which is very very important might be you not have been heard about that and that is known as the pear patches for competitive exams it is very very important pear patches are lymphoid aggregates they are actually lymphoid tissues okay pear patches are very very important pear patches are lymphoid aggregates present in the submucosa of ileum they are present in submucosa of ileum again i am repeating pear patches are lymphoid aggregates present in the submucosa of the ileum and they are involved in the production of B lymphocytes and they are involved in the production of B lymphocyte and therefore they protect the intestine from infection and because of the presence of the lymphocytes they are engulfing the harmful bacteria and preventing the small intestine from infection okay I can say they show phagocytosis of the bacteria so you must have knowledge about the pear patches also now let's have a discussion on how many parts are there in the small intestine so the small intestine have three parts the first part is duodenum then the jejunum and then the ileum last part of the small intestine is the ileum first part is the duodenum now duodenum is the smallest part it is the first part of the small in intestine and it is only 25 centimeter long it is only 25 centimeter long and if we see the shape of the duodenum uh, it it is c shaped basically it is c shaped like this it is like this type okay it is like this type it is c shaped okay but in some books you can find that it is written that it is u shaped so we can say that it is u or c shaped okay now it has ampulla of waiter it has ampulla of waiter okay a bulbous structure ampulla of waiter which receives both the bile duct coming from the liver and the pancreatic duct coming from the pancreas and whose opening is guarded by sphincter of odai and remember this thing that the common the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct is called as a hepatopancreatic duct I can say that hepatopancreatic duct is guarded by a sphincter of odai and it opens into ampulla of waiter of the duodenum or I can say it, it has ampulla of waiter which is receiving the bile duct coming from the liver and the pancreatic duct coming from the pancreas and these pancreatic duct and bile duct commonly called as the hepatopancreatic duct are guarded by a opening are guarded by sphincter of odai are guarded by a wall known as sphincter of odai okay now a wall of duodenum this wall of duodenum contains intestinal glands very very important the wall of the duodenum the wall of the duodenum contains intestinal glands which are also called as the crypts of libercum and these crypts of libercum or the intestinal glands release intestinal juice which is also called as succus entericus and the wall of the duodenum not only consists of the crypts of libercum or the intestinal glands 
but they also consist of characteristic Brunner's gland very very important many times it is asked that where the Brunner's glands are present so the wall of duodenum contains the Brunner's gland which produces the alkaline mucus so what is the role of the Brunner's gland that it releases the alkaline mucus now coming to the next part of the small intestine and that is known as the jejunum jejunum is thicker it is thicker and more vascular means it is having rich blood supply and it is 2.5 meter long and what is the role of the jejunum jejunum is present between the duodenum and the ileum its prime role is uh, to connect the uh, first part that is the duodenum with the ileum part okay and uh, of course it helps in the absorption also okay so the last part is the ileum it is thinner than the jejunum it is thinner than the jejunum and also it is less vascular than the jejunum it is the longest part it is the longest part of our small intestine and it is 3.5 meter long and what happened say for this is the ileum say for this is the ileum so the last part of the ileum last part of the ileum that is the distal part of the ileum gets dilated gets swell and a bulb like structure is formed and that is known as the secular rotundus. this is called as what secular rotundus. so this is ileum and its last swollen part and its last swollen part is called as the secular rotundus. and ultimately ileum opens into the first part of the large intestine known as the cecum through a valve and that valve is known as the ileocecal valve okay by this video we have just studied the basics of the small intestine we have not studied that how do digestion and absorption occur in the small intestine when we will be dealing with the physiology of the digestion then at that time we will be discussing that how does digestion and absorption occur in the small intestine so thanks a lot in the next video we will be dealing with the large intestine that is the three parts of the uh, large intestine cecum colon and rectum so thanks a lot Keep watching.